Hey guys, before we start today's video, I'd like to remind everyone about my GoFundMe. I do have some medical bills that I need to pay off within this month, and I have about like around $4,000 worth of bills to pay off. And if I get just about like $2,800 or $3,800, I should be able to pay off at least a majority of it and then pay off the rest through monthly bills. Um, so if you can help me out through that, that would be great. Thank you guys so much. Hey everyone, it's me Goose. How you doing? Uh, it's been a very long time since I've made a video about video games and video game related stuff. I mean, this is what this channel was at first, but now it seems like we've really strayed off that beaten path, haven't we? It's not necessarily a bad thing, it seems like you guys still like the creepy content, but I, I still really enjoy video gamey stuff more so than drama and equally as much as creepy content, so I do want to give you some of that again. I think today I have something that I kind of want to talk about that's more of an editorial than uh, a real cover of something that's happened, although we will be talking about some past drama that's happened in the past week or so. All of this, of course, stemming off from two different dramas that happened last week with 3D Realms and, of course, our favorite boys over at respawn studios oh sorry it's a respawn entertainment you, you know ex you know what i'm talking about what, like who else is called anyways if you hadn't heard essentially what has happened was respawn entertainment uh they had a very huge issue regarding their micro transactions and 3d realms had an issue where uh their speech the team were talking about some stuff that a lot of people didn't really appreciate Starting off with the 3D Realms comments, uh, it started with their public discord. See, they were having a little casual discussion about many things, one of them not being as casual as you might think, surrounding transgenders and how they believe that any parent who decided that their kid was trans at birth had mental problems. There were also claims that one of the developers said that a trans person getting a transitional surgery was just mutilating a perfectly healthy body. To give context to that, he's just saying that someone who has mental issues such as depression, anxiety, and all that stuff uh, could potentially be more harmful if they went under this sort of great stress that a surgery often does. But I don't think that's tabloidy enough, is it? Then again, you could still also think that it's a shitty opinion. I mean, it's up to you, honestly. All of this and more was reposted on Reset Era's forums where a lot of people were basically being assholes. Now you can say whatever you want about 3D Realms, but do keep in mind that much of the context was definitely butchered when it was recycled through the media and the masses. And much of the conversations are available. I mean, they, they have a public Discord. This is where the conversation took place. So you could just look through that if you want to, or just look through other screenshots that talk about this sort of thing in a much greater depth. But I do think it's ironic that the main entry of this entire conversation was the fact that they were saying that uh, much of modern civilization has become too fragile and too crazy. People love to complain about everything and anything, honestly, so long as they have the time for it. And trust me, everybody has time for drama. But again, you could also think that they have a really shitty opinion on things, and that's fine. So long as you understand the entire context of this, I'm not going to blame you for thinking whatever you want to think. This didn't really get that much attention, to be honest. I mean, it got some attention by some noteworthy YouTubers, I'm sure. But other than that, it was very drama-ish and tabloidy. There was nothing really to talk about. But do keep that in mind as we talk about our next subject. That, of course, being Respawn Entertainment and their horrible horrible microtransactions that Apex is currently suffering. See, there's this premium item that you have to pay $35 for, and that's totally, totally expensive. I mean, fucking Christ. But that alone isn't what got people pissed off. I mean, that alone probably would have gotten a lot of outrage in itself, but what's really outraged is the fact that it's locked behind 24 event items. And these event items are locked behind loot boxes, which you have to purchase. And an estimate about $200 or so has to be spent before you can even buy the $35 premium item for this season. It is a ludicrous amount of money that has gotten the developers to, well, speak up about it in the worst possible fashion. To summarize, they don't really apologize for uh, coming out with a <laughs> totally expensive and totally inefficient way to collect items for their season pass or whatever they have going on i can't even call this a season i don't fucking know but rather they ensure that they have some some quick fix but it's not really a quick fix it's it's more like a, a, a different an alternative rather and this alternative is in no way better 
Needless to say, people got outraged. And of course, they took it on Reddit, where, you know, it, it's often that the developers and the consumers can communicate with one another in a rather organized fashion. You know, unlike Twitter, where you speak one on one with people and then you suddenly get barraged by several, several kinds of questions. On Reddit, you have an entire thread where you could just talk. And talk, people did. And, well, mostly they complained. And some of the responses were incredibly funny, super cringy but much of what was said was incredibly valid. And of course, the devs having their own Reddit accounts on this subreddit had a lot of things to say as well, but much of what they said was just dickish, shitty, and totally, totally out of the realm of what a professional developer should be saying to their public audience. It is so out of touch and out of focus that it makes people wonder why even bother talking to them. It is like no different than talking to a reddit troll than to talk to a professional developer who's getting paid to make this game. It's a shame that this has to happen, but I'm mentioning both of these two controversies, and I'm sorry if I butchered both of them because I know there's a lot more to these than meets the eye, but I want to focus on the idea that they were controversies in themselves and if they're even justified at all. Because don't get me wrong, I think everybody has the right to criticize and to complain. Absolutely. I mean, if a product you like, if a product you use and continuously use suddenly changed or has some awful, horrible thing happen to it where you're just not uh, agreeing with the changes, then you have every right to complain and to think whatever you want. What you think might not be totally right and maybe some people won't agree with you, you have that thought to yourself, of course. But there is a boundary to be broken when there are people out there that complain for seemingly no reason or they, at worst, give death threats to the people who are making this product. And I believe there is no media out there that is more controversial or rather more one-on-one -on -one than video games. People who work in video games, while well, they all have some sort of connection to electronics and of course they would have some sort of social media where they would talk to you one-on-one -on, -one on Twitter or on Reddit, wherever. So there's this personal connection now. It's no longer like 12 or 15 years ago where if you were really angry at people or really angry at a company, you say Nintendo, then you could just go online and just complain to them via their social media account that's not really connected to Nintendo at all. It's just connected to the social media, I don't know, PR dudes, you know, it's not really, you know, you're not going to get to Miyamoto by complaining on the North American Twitter account. Of course you're not. But it's the fact that it's so instant, the instantaneous feedback that you can talk to someone from Nintendo that's so satisfying whereas back in 15 years ago or 20 years ago you had to email them or or mail them something at most but now everything's changed and people's mindsets have also changed the perspectives have changed 3d realms is a classic example of a, a studio that has changed greatly these were the guys who made Duke Nukem, a very problematic man who is overly toxic with his masculinity. Not only that, but he was an incredible misogynist pig, and honestly, he's a douchebag. <laughs> but that's the beauty behind Duke Nukem, is that he's a parody of himself. He's a piece of shit, musclehead beef guy who doesn't really care about anyone except booze, women, and himself. He's an egotistical bastard, and that's just why we love him. Of course, if we were to make that exact same game today, well, people would not really think fondly of it. And part of what happened with the whole 3D Realms controversy was the fact that in their newest game, Ion Fury, they said the word retarded, which really got a lot of people kind of fizzled. Sorry, fizzled? I mean frazzled. What are they? What are they, soda? <laughs> <laughs> but legitimately, people got mad, and I'm assuming this is why this whole assault started in the first place, because people were trying to find something problematic, and as soon as they started tr talking about transgenders, then, well, it just spoke for itself, honestly. But I want to go back to what 3D Realms was saying in the first place, that SJWs didn't really exist back when Duke Nukem existed, so this entire controversy or any controversy that they have nowadays is totally fabricated because honestly, most of the controversy you hear nowadays is nonsensical, really. Just like when Kotaku uh, out of nowhere thought that somehow Persona 5's lyrics had the word retarded in it, when in reality, that makes no sense whatsoever. Even if you just use two of your brain cells, 
you can think, hey, this game came out about two to three years ago. They, if nobody talked about this then, then nobody will be talking about it now. Then obviously this isn't happening. And there have been many examples of stories like that from Kotaku and different outlets as well. This created a fissure between the audience and, of course, the game devs. And it's not the result of just one story or this thing or that thing or whatever controversy you want to point at. It's been a result of many years of fans being very, very controlling of developers. If not controlling, then, then being outraged of them. Now granted, developers haven't really been innocent themselves. Of course, there have been several controversies that have led to well-needed criticism. You don't need to look any further than game companies like EA to see that this kind of shit is crap. I mean, you look at the microtransactions that they have in every single video game they've ever touched, and you can see that things have really changed from back in 10 years ago when microtransactions was just a thing of the future and nobody really wanted to do it. But then of course, EA did it. But then again, sometimes game devs are just out of touch and they don't really understand what their uh, audience wants and they give them the wrong product or the wrong thing and suddenly people are mad and you're all shocked about it. I, I don't know why you would be, but consumers are fickle. I, I mean, I'll give you that, they really are. Many times they just complain and give death threats to people who haven't even made games yet. Probably not the best example in the world, but it's one that I've always really kept in mind, and that's the one with Hello Games and with No Man's Sky. The game was in development for a long time, and, well, they really, really needed to delay it several times, uh, and it got so bad that they just got death threats from audiences that haven't even played their game, but were just really excited to touch it or, or see anything else of it. And honestly, I, I always mention, I always mention it, but I seriously think that that's why the game came out the way it did. I mean, aside from the fact that there was a giant storm that pretty much wiped out their entire hard drives and everything like that, I still think the people at Hello Games were just fearing for their lives that somebody was actually going to kill their family members. They got death threats in the mail. I mean, you don't take that shit lightly at all. And then the game came out and, well, people still were outraged. I mean, Jesus Christ, there's no satisfying some people, honestly. I mean, yes, the game was shit, but honestly, they were backed up in a corner. Either get shit on or get killed. I don't know, which one would you choose? And it's this sort of fickle behavior that has led to many game developers just being so cautious and kind of being impatient with their audiences. And I can't really blame Respawn Entertainment for behaving this way. I mean, yes, I can, but... Uh, let's just say that I can't really blame them. Huh? I mean, for Christ's sakes, they, they called their entire fan base a bunch of freeloaders. Like, come on, man. Seriously? It's just years and years and years of having consumers just whisper into their ears these horrible things and constantly complaining towards them. And like I said, even with the Apex Legends subreddit, there have been some really cringy and shitty behavior towards the developers and most of it is totally unwarranted you can totally criticize a game without threatening people or just being a total douchebag towards them but similarly you can be a professional developer own up to your mistakes or just reassure people that you're you're gonna do better or give them something instead of just fighting back at them while i don't think respawn entertainment themselves are being shat on as much as other game devs are I mean, EA, they, they belong to EA, so I'm sure they get the brunt of it many times in the past. Every day in game journalism, you always see something stupid being posted, something dumb, something that blames the devs, something that always asks for an apology for something that the, the developers don't need to really apologize for. And people are getting sick of it, both the consumers and, of course, the devs, but more so the devs because this is what they work on for years. And for all those years to accumulate of someone threatening your family or just straight up being a total piece of shit to you even though they don't know who you are, I mean, can you really blame them? It's like with the whole controversy behind Dead or Alive Extreme 3 Volleyball's uh, issues. If you don't know about that, essentially what happened was there was no localization for the latest volleyball game with Dead or Alive characters. The Extreme series had always shown fan service, you know, women scantily dressed in these bikinis. Oh my god, bikinis, scantily? What the fuck am I saying? They're bikinis. It's it's just how they are. But of course, it, it is fan service. It's, it's meant for those lonely men who just want to see anime titties in, in 3D. Three Koei Tecmo actually acknowledged the fact that they didn't want to be in the United States. They didn't want the game to be released there. Why? 
because they knew that there was going to be a lot of outrage and backlash for it. In Japan and in most Asian countries, this is seen as something that people love. I mean, they enjoy this sort of stuff for many different reasons, and I guess you can think of five others, but there's never really been a fuss about these volleyball games. But Koei Tecmo was afraid that if they brought it to America, SJWs were just gonna ruin it and complain about it anyways. And guess what? They complained about it anyways! <laughs> Even the fact that they never came out in the United States, it still sparked controversy because it didn't come out in the United States, and they blamed Koei Tecmo for not understanding America or something like that, but then again, some other people were saying, "Oh well, we don't want it anyways because it, it has titties and you're 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 being gross because Japan is gross and you don't know how to treat your women." Blah 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 blah, blah etc. You know, you know, it can get tiring. I just think it's weird. That's all. I, I just think it's weird that we're living in an age where developers are getting very impatient and very tired of consumers, where they don't really care about them or they don't even want to interact with them and call them all these names and be bad towards them. And we also have consumers who are pieces of shit and just like to complain about anything, everything, and whatever. And you might say, yes, this is a minority group, you shouldn't really care about it. But it is a very vocal minority. And you know that people are attracted more to negativity than they are positivity. I mean, as much as people love Iron Fury, I'm sure 3D Realms is facing more people calling them assholes and pieces of shit for saying retarded or not having the woman scantily dressed. Because yes, that too was also a controversy. People complained that Ion Fury was just being an SJW cuck for having a female protagonist who was respectable and actually not scantily dressed at all. And then here we have SJWs complaining that they're being conservative assholes for saying that parents who think their kids are transgender probably shouldn't be having kids in the first place. Even if you think it's a shitty opinion, I mean, it's just that. It doesn't affect the game at all, nor does it really affect the state of the developers even it like I, I don't understand why it's a controversy in the first place why do you need 3d realms to apologize for that because some people were involved in the the the, the entire conversation I, I don't know and look i think it's a very interesting thing that both of these topics these these controversies are similar in nature both have to do with outrage fans both have to do with developers speaking out both of them addressing fans in a very negative tone but in reality, they're very different in terms of context. The Apex Legends developers had done something very egregious and very greedy, to be honest. Of course, fans bit back and, well, the developers didn't really take kindly to this and started insulting them for something that they did to their own game. Meanwhile, the folks back at 3D Realms were just talking very casually in their own Discord server, but maybe a little too casually for some people's comfort. But honestly, public or not, this is just a casual conversation that really does no harm to anyone whatsoever. Maybe it insults you, sure, but that has nothing to do with the game or the product or even the studio itself. It doesn't reflect the people behind the games and the game that was just released. But then again, you can argue that since they're the developers, they should act professional in front of people. But are they supposed to keep up this professionalism 24-7 even in their own Discord server where they could just be whoever they want, just talk to fans directly? With the Apex Legends things, it was different. They were addressing fans who were concerned about the future of the game and the current state of the game, and they needed to quell the flames that were currently uh, just burning up the entire subreddit. But with 3D Realms, I mean, there was a hint of controversy going on, but there wasn't really that much to talk about, so they just talked about whatever they wanted to talk about. But again, should they have been professional? I mean, it's their job to make the game. I don't think it's their job to maintain the, the face of the company. I, I, I don't know. It's just concerning nowadays. You look to the left and you see consumers who are very outraged and very, very dangerous to the point where sometimes they just give people death threats for what they say and for what they think about and all that stuff. And then you look to the right and we have developers who act morally high and talk like they know everything and that the consumers never know what they're talking about. And then they price everything super high and all these microtransactions are feeding into gambling and, and addiction problems and all sorts of stuff. There's no winning things, honestly. But I think it's healthy to remember that there is good on both sides. Consumers can really help elevate a developer, rise up, and get the notice that they need. 
And on the other hand, there are some very good, talented developers out there who really listen to their audience and will always, always help make the product best for them than for the developers themselves. By which I mean they won't just profit off of you because they see you as dollar signs walking around. There really is a healthy majority of both, really. It's just that we don't see them because they have nothing really to say. I mean, when you're content, you don't have anything to talk about. You're just going to say you're happy and that you love it and that's it. But when people are drama queens or if they're very controversial, they have something to say, then they have a lot to say. They have a lot of things to say and you really get to see who they are by the controversies they get offended over. But hey, this video has been going on way, 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 way too long. Oh my God, I just realized it's like almost 20 minutes long. Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry. Um, but thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry if the background footage is really shitty. I haven't played a console game in a long time. And yes, this is in console. It's PS4. I haven't played that in a long time. And so I just, you know, made some footage for that. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Goodbye.